toward the end of the chapter. Verse 39, Luke chapter 22, and he came out and went as he was wont um, to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me, nevertheless, not my will but thine be done. And there appeared an angel on him from heaven, strengthening him, and being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as there were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from the prayer, he was from prayer, he was come, and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow, and said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. There's two things we want to look at here with the matter of prayer, and then we'll just be finished this evening. We want to look at the disciples in the garden and their need to pray. We want to look at Jesus and see His need to pray. Friend, what happened when Jesus prayed and asked the Lord if He was willing to remove His cup from Him? A cup would be a term for suffering, but we don't exactly know the truth of the matter is what exactly Jesus was asking for God to grant in this matter because we know that the book of Hebrews says that God answered His prayer. Now we can see His answer to prayer could be that the angel came and sustained him and succored him or gave him the ability to make it through this circumstance. That could have been the answer to prayer. But the Scripture really indicates that God answered his prayer and removed the cup from him. And friend, I don't know exactly what that prayer is because the Bible doesn't say so. And by the way, there are things that you won't know until you get to heaven. If you think you're intelligent enough to figure out the mind of God, you think you're smarter than he is or as smart as he is. And let's just be honest about it. We don't exactly know, but we know before Jesus went to the cross... He saw that He could not have made it even to the cross without prayer. We know that because an angel came and gave Him sustenance and it revived His strength and His energy. He was in such great sorrow at this point in time that physically speaking, He hadn't slept for a couple of days. He knew that the time was come, His hour was come, that He was to go to the cross. He knew that Judas had left to betray Him. And here He is in the garden with his disciples, and he wakes them up and says to them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. Friend, do you think things may have been different for Peter if he hadn't slept? I know, it's, again, it's hypothetical. What if Peter had prayed and not slept? We don't know, do we? Because the disciples prayed. But they were commanded by Jesus to pray that they enter not into temptation. You think it was specific? what they were told to pray for? Do you think they knew what to pray for? What had Jesus finished discussing with the disciples before this? You're going to betray me. You're going to deny me. And Peter said, uh-uh. He said, if every one of these guys denies you, Jesus, I won't. And Jesus says, before the cock crows three times, You'll de- or before the cock crows, you'll deny me thrice. One, two, three, Peter did. He said, I don't know him, and he swore. And friend, I want to say to you, Peter didn't have to deny Christ. Oh, I know it was prophesied. I know Jesus said he would. But friend, the reason he denied Christ is because he didn't pray for God's help in this matter of temptation. Friend, the Scripture commands believers to walk in the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, and we won't obey the lust of the flesh. But I'm telling you, you can't begin to walk in the Spirit without prayer. You may be saved. God may have miraculously saved you, and Christ has come and He's indwelt you with His Holy Spirit. Friend, I want to tell you something. You can be a child of Christ, and you'll fall into sin. Unless you pray. Unless you pray. Many believers are struggling with this matter and God's convicted their heart about a specific matter of sin. By the way, you know what your sin is. You don't need me to do a diagnostic test in your life. You know. That's the truth. You know, I have people call me sometimes. They'll say, i got this problem and, and I'm troubled in my spirit because of this and this and this. And I'll just show them what the Scripture says about sin. And I'll tell them, you know what, there's some kind of sin in your life and you're honest about it. You know what it is. You know what they always do. Or they're honest. They just say, yeah, I know what it is. 
Well, then you got a you got a point of decision. You need to call sin what it is, but friend, when did you have the power to have victory over sin? When did you have the strength to take care of your sin problem? You didn't before you were saved, and you don't now. You need God's help. And Jesus' disciples need God's help, and if they're doing what they ought to do right now, they'll be praying in the garden. The Son of God saw that He needed God. And friend, you do as well. By the way, Jesus' disciples, uh, people think they're a ragtag lot. They were the 12 men on earth that God led Him to choose to be foundational gifts to the local church. I mean, they were, they were, they were the founders of the church. They were the 12 men that Jesus said, when I leave, you're going to have the earthly ministry. And by, with God's power, you're going to represent me here on this earth. There were the 12 men on earth that got chosen for that. And Jesus said, you men need to pray. And if they needed to pray, friend, can I ask you a question? Don't you? Don't we more? How in the world do you think you're going to have victory over your sin without prayer? See, you've tried it in your strength and you've failed time and again. And you've come to the conclusion that God isn't sufficient. Friend, I'm telling you, God's sufficient. You just haven't prayed. If you want to have victory over sin in your life, you want to avoid being led into temptation, you want to avoid falling when you're tempted, you need to pray. And here's Christ, the Son of God, and he is, before He goes to the cross, He spends every minute of His waking hours before He goes to the cross. The message of tonight is not three points in a poem. It's not probably what a lot of people would want to see in it. Bible message, but I'm telling you, you and I need to see Christ. Go through a time and accomplish the plan of God the Father that you needed God's strength. And friend, I want to tell you something. God's grace is sufficient. The Apostle Paul said, His, my, Jesus, He besought the Lord thrice, He said, that a thorn will be removed from His flesh. And they said, Paul, you don't need your problem to go away. What you need is to go through this in my strength. And friend, I want to say something to you. It may be that God has called you I'm tired of hearing about Democrats. I'm tired of hearing about how Obama's ruining our country. He's not. That guy couldn't ruin his, the country. Is that our moral fabric is rotted. The problem in our country is Christians. Listen, you can vote laws into office all day long. We'd be one walking jail if we arrested everybody for being immoral because our country's not moral, because our churches aren't moral, because our people are immoral, because we do not have the power of God in our lives. Good representation for what we are as a nation. And if you don't like Him, look at yourself because He represents you. I don't care whether you voted for Him or not. Begging God to intercede for your child, for your family member, for a person as the rivers of water he moveth the wither to every will. I'm telling you, he couldn't accomplish a single thing against the will of God if God's people would pray. Tonight, when our nation is so needy, it's half empty. My friend, Fort Lauderdale oughtn't to be able to hold the people that need God in a single room. Yes, I, we should pray. You know what was said about Jesus' disciples after He had accomplished the work on the cross and God's Spirit had come in power and people were being saved all around? The disciples of Jesus didn't turn the world upside down without praying. I promise you that we don't have a book that has been completed in the early church preached and taught Christ and has saved and changed thousands of lives for thousands of years for any other reason than prayer. I'm not really you know, a, a spiritual person. My friend, God didn't ask for spiritual people. He said, you ought to pray. Well, you know, I don't know, you know, everything the Bible says. Friend, you could go to God Almighty and you could pray. You know one of the first things, and I'm going to close with this, when somebody's newly come to Christ, I mean, right after they're saved, I just take them to 1 John chapter 5. Yeah. And the Scripture goes on talking about how this is the record. And this is how, this, these things that are written unto you that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe and pray and ask God to save them. And the Holy Spirit of God is coming in to help them. The first thing I tell them to do is to not tell anybody else, not talk to anybody else about it. It's been a problem in life their whole life long and pray about it and ask God to give them victory over it. Or maybe it's uh, a need, something that they know God would want in their life. I mean, it's they come to me and they're just like, man, this is the most real thing I've ever seen in my life. When you pray, God answers your prayer. And Christian, new believers know that. that. When you were saved, when you started praying, the first time God just answered a prayer. He's just like, wow, I got a hold of heaven. I mean, the God of the universe interceded.